Plenty of Dolphins free agency rumors and news to get into on today's show. If you are excited about the upcoming start of Dolphins free agency, then spam me in the comment section. In theory, it should be pretty much every person watching. Let's begin with the latest rumor. That is on Jonu Smith, the tight end, as the Dolphins reportedly in contract talks to sign the former Falcons tight end, which I think does make some sense for Miami. This was the report from Adam Schefter later last night saying the free agent tight end visited the Dolphins on Tuesday. The two sides are said to be in contract negotiations, i.e. the agent told Schefter that's what's happening. Uh, Smith, of course, was almost as productive as Kyle Pitts, which was, I, I thought, kind of funny, um, you know, because that's a big reason why I thought Switch got fired. Anyway, I, I digress. But the production is intriguing here. Uh, you know, 500 plus yards last season on 50 catches, three touchdowns. He got paid by the Patriots in free agency a couple of seasons ago. Did not, if we're being honest, remotely uh, live up to the expectations that came with that contract. It was he and Hunter Henry both got big deals, and the results were not remotely close to uh, what the Dolphins as an organization, or the Patriots as an organization, were expecting them to get, and they move on. Ends up in Atlanta, and uh, Smith ends up finishing you know, with the Falcons and did a, a pretty solid job and showed flashes of big play potential in Tennessee. So on what we would expect is a fairly cheaper contract, this stands out to me. Because the Dolphins didn't get great production last year from their tight end crew. Durham Smythe, who I still think is more of a two, had 366 yards. Julian Hill had six catches. And, you know, Tyler Croft's a free agent. We'll see if he's even back. I kind of wouldn't anticipate that being the case. So adding what I think would be a pretty cheap veteran tight end who is solid and who is able to communicate with Dolphins because he was cut by the Falcons, so he's a free agent already there. Uh, going out and pursuing that path does make sense for Miami. It's not exactly a home run off the charts potential move, but it's solid, it's affordable, and it's an upgrade. That's not something I think that should ever be upset about Dolphins or any NFL team out there. So grade the potential signing of Jonu Smith, A, B, C, D, or F. This would kind of fill that B category, assuming it is a relatively cheap one-year deal, which would be my expectation and guess there. It's the pinned comment on today's video, so if the ad comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and let me know. Now, Pro Football Network's Adam Beasley also explored the idea of the Dolphins looking into signing a potential star running back since the Dolphins are always linked to running backs in NFL free agency. They dated back to last year. Good thing they did not sign Dalvin Cook. He is officially Dalvin Cooked, by the way. They mentioned five names on this list, or Adam did. Saquon Barkley, probably going to fetch around $10 million dollars. Josh Jacobs of the Raiders and Derrick Henry of the Titans could be in similar categories. Maybe Derrick Henry ends up being the cheapest of that trio because of the age and now entering his third contract, not including franchise tags for Barkley and, and Jacobs there. Pollard offers some explosion. I think he was limited by a poor run scheme and run blocking unit uh, in Dallas. Could be a, a more explosive, cheaper option there. Also, he ends up re-signing. Eckler stands out as the outlier there. I know he's a big name. He had 3.5 yards per carry. That's, that's not something that I think would make sense for a, a team like the Dolphins. To get him a cheap one-year deal with little to no money, sure. But I don't think pursuing Eckler is a good idea or even a big name running back target. There's also the monetary concerns I have with a team like Miami and their cap situation pursuing a running back, what they have on the roster. More on that in a minute, but first, today's show is made possible by Game Time. Game Time has deals right up to the start of whatever event you're going to. Sporting events like the Heat, Marlins will be back uh, in the not-too-distant future playing real baseball games, of course, concerts, comedy, theater as well. And you can even take it after an hour of, after the start of the event. It is the place to find deals on last-minute seats. I like their zone deals. You can't always find them, but when you do, it's kind of a no-brainer. The zone deals let you pick the section, and game time picks the seats. On average, 18% savings. That's the average. You can get a little bit more, potentially, as well. 
The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row for less, game time is going to credit you 110% of the difference. That's a pretty awesome deal. They're also giving you $20 off your first purchase when you use code FINSCHAT. Download the game time app, create your account, and use that code P H I N S. C H A T for 20 bucks off. Now, of course, of course, terms do apply, but create your account, download the app at gametime.co, and use that promo code for 20 bucks off. Link will be in the comment section and the description of today's show. Game Time's got last minute tickets, the lowest price guaranteed. Now, here's part of the argument laid out from Adam Beasley on the running backs as we come back to that. Dolphins GM Chris Greer has shown excellent positional discipline, wisely refusing to overpay for the likes of Dalvin Cook in free agency. But if Barkley or Henley want to come here for a reasonable figure and try to win a Super Bowl, the Dolphins would absolutely listen. They could also cut third stringer at best Jeff Wilson and save $2.9 million in cap and cash. I think there is a chance one of the running backs could end up being very affordable for you. You know, now I don't know how cheap a guy like Saquon or Henry is going to come to Miami. Like Saquon wants to get it out. He's going to get, I think, around $10 million. And if you can cut that number down in half, get a little bit, pay a little bit more than what you're paying Jeff Wilson. At that point, it starts to become a reasonable discussion for Miami. There's so much running back talent. The supply outweighs the demand. And a team like Miami could find a good value and upgrade that room. My issue is, do you need and or want to do that? The reality is for Miami, although you can sign any one player any offseason if you want to, you can't sign every player in every offseason. And there will be some moves you choose not to make. And running back, if and when the quarterback contract becomes so expensive, is the spot that most teams choose to go cheaper. So do you need a running back? Raheem most had 1,000 yards last season. 18 touchdowns on almost five yards per carry. Devin H. Chain had 800 yards on a, an unsustainable 7.8 yards per carry. That will regress back to the mean a little bit, but that number could drop by three, and we're still talking about really good production right there. You're, I'm probably going to move on from Jeff Wilson. Chris Brooks can be my short yardage power back. You ran for over five yards a carry. Would you rather spend, let's say that, let's say the, the number seven. Would you rather spend seven million bucks on, on a top back or on a guard or a center who can start for you? I think I'd rather go with the offensive line mindset, but that's just my opinion. What do you guys think? Do you want to sign a top uh, back in free agency? Why for yes and for no? Go ahead and vote in the comments. Now, the Dolphins have also cut linebacker Jerome Baker, a move that frees up $9.8 million in salary cap space. And with the same refrain we heard around, hey, they could bring back Christian Wilkins still, maybe. Something similar with Baker. Adam Schefter, who broke that news yesterday. We, we did a short on it, by the way. Hope you guys caught that. Says the two sides discussed a restructured contract, but couldn't reach an agreement. Of note, that means a pay cut, not like a typical restructuring, because that's an automatic move that the team can do. It was a pay cut is what they had discussed. The Dolphins left the door open to him coming back if he chooses. So be honest with me. What do you think is the percent chance that Jerome Baker ends up returning to the Miami Dolphins? Go ahead and sound off. Where else but the comments? I would not anticipate a reunion. I don't think Jerome Baker's going to get the nearly $10 million he was due this year and the Dolphins saved by cutting him, but he's probably going to end up getting more than what the Dolphins were comfortable doing. Now, I think you can find a starting caliber linebacker in free agency. I don't think that's going to be that challenging to do. Uh, it just may or may not be the same type of player, or maybe it's a bit cheaper, whatever. So I think it's possible he comes back, but I would anticipate him trying to get more elsewhere. The Dolphins lose a starting caliber linebacker for them. It's one of those things where the cap savings were so high, you really had to just think about doing it. But linebacker is a need now for this team. David Long, I like him. I think he'll be a good fit in the Anthony Weaver defense, by the way. But I'm not starting Duke Riley. And is Channing Tindall going to end up being a piece? I, you know, I, I would not feel particularly confident uh, in that one. It'd be nice if he ends up emerging, but we're talking about somebody who had 
in 17 games. What was it? Eight, eight tackles, something like that. You may, maybe you draft one. You could also maybe find a, a solid veteran, or maybe you get ultra aggressive and spend your big money at, 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 in free agency with maybe a former Raven who's a free agent at linebacker who knows Anthony Weaver so well. We will have a perfect, not you know, closer to realistic than ridiculousness, free agency plan for you guys here on the channel before free agency gets going. So hit that sub button so you don't miss out. One other roster move official, Isaiah Mack, has signed with the Miami Dolphins. This is kind of, if you're ranking your players, this guy's closer to, you know, player number 90 than it ends up being player number 53. This is off-season depth and free agents or, and, you know, practice squad candidates and, uh, you know, training camp battles for one of those last roster spots and help you get through camp in the preseason. Isaiah Mack's been a career journeyman in every sense of the word. Entered the NFL in 2019. Since this is now his ninth team in that time frame. Two years with Tennessee, uh, some time with New England, time with the Broncos, Steelers, and the Ravens, which of course stand out with the now Anthony Weaver higher as the DC. There's the connection there. Seattle, the Jets, and the Commanders. He has been a journeyman through and through. I, I would not assume he ends up being a player who makes this 53-man roster, but it is, of course, a signing, and you know we're going to mention it.